must say, enjoy that clap for the World Cup. Thank you. Well, more supporters like you. Okay, just before we start, I would just like to pray for us. Um, if you can just close your eyes. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much for this opportunity tonight for me to come and share my story with this wonderful church here, Lord. I pray that you will open their hearts and make them listen to your voice, Lord. Thank you for blessing us and thank you for all your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I was saying to my wife, <clears throat> I've got this thing in my throat tonight, and it reminded me of that movie, Along Came Polly, where the guy goes in the meeting and goes, <clears throat> <clears throat> so if I do that a few times, just bear with me. Um, I've got my notes on my phone here. Um, let me just give you guys a little background on my, my walk with God. And I never really had a relationship with God. I always knew He was there, uh, and I just... I read the Bible and gave my heart to the Lord a few times, but I never really understood what it meant. Um, you know, His grace, His love. I never understood any of those things. Um, so my journey was quite a quick turnaround for me, and I'll, and I'll explain it more in detail. Um, as I said, falling short always in my life, in my journey, <clears throat> before I got saved, was always a case of, as you all know, we humans, we're going to make mistakes. And I always had this challenge. I'll try for a while and I'll fall short. And I could never really understand how to get to understand God's love. Um, so my journey started quite weird. Uh, I had a stress fracture in my back. And at the time, the Pro Tips Cricket team, the, the management decided to, it's better for me to take a break because it can turn out to be quite serious. Uh, so they said, look, we want you to take two weeks off <clears throat> the series against Pakistan, but also you must miss half of the IPL. And pff, that was quite tough for me because, you know, the IPL is, is where we as cricketers earn our good money now. So it was, I said to them, isn't there anything else we can do? Um, but they said two weeks there and two weeks here is, is, is kind of what we're looking at for you to rest. Um, so at the time I was quite down because... My first two years of the IPL was the first year I sat on the bench and, and was a drinks boy. And then the second year, I, I had a, an opportunity to play and I did really well. So going back, I felt I was giving up my spot. <clears throat> and that was quite tough for me. In a professional sport, once you make a spot your own, you don't give it up to anyone. So at that time, it was quite difficult to come to terms with. Um, and my wife saw an opportunity and she said, why don't you go for marriage counseling? <laughs> and obviously, I want, I want to try and be the best husband that I can be. I said, okay, cool, let's do it. And uh, I found a, a guy named, named Ratif Berger. I'm sure he, quite a few know of him. He's been here before. And I said to him, look, Ratif, my wife wants us to come and do some marriage counseling. Uh, would you be open to meeting up with us? Uh, and he said, yeah, no, sure, no problem. But he wanted to meet with me first. And I said, okay, cool, I'll go. I had breakfast with him. And he said, uh, it's very important for me to have a, a few sessions with him because he sees the, the guy or the husband as being the leader in the relationship. Just as the church submits to God, the guy has, just, has also got to submit to the Lord because then your wife will submit under you, and you have to be a really good leader. So, obviously, I understand a little bit about leadership, and I said to him, cool, I want to be the, the leader, I want to do well in our family. <clears throat> so, I met with him, and uh, after about two sessions, he told me, look, I want you to give your heart to the Lord. And I said to him, um, I don't think I'm quite ready yet. There's quite a few areas in my life that needs a bit of patching up, and uh, I don't think I'm ready to be saved yet. And obviously that's, that's quite a stupid thing to say because I said a bit loud. Um, it's just an excuse. Uh, and he said to me, look, if you're ready, I would, I would really like you to commit today. So I ended up doing it. Uh, I, I prayed the salvation prayer there. And, and, and I remember him saying to me that God picks, that he doesn't, you don't have to do anything to get his grace. That's the beautiful thing about our religion is we don't have to do anything. He's already died for us at the cross. He's done everything. And the only thing you have to do is say, look, I'm here. 
I'm here for you. Take my heart and take control. So I did that. Um, and I've, I've got a couple of verses here. If you guys have Bibles and you want to write it down or, or just read through it with me. But just the verses that meant something to me at the time. Um, it was 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 where it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And that basically, I had no answer to that when he, when he read me that. <clears throat> and the other verse I wanted to give to you guys was Romans 10. Sorry, I'm going a bit quickly here, guys. I've got a timer there. Um, Romans 10 verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and not justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess that you are saved. So great, gave my heart to the Lord, really excited. Um, then one or two sessions later, we came to the chapter where it was all about obedience. Um, and before I had this fight with obedience, like I said, when you don't know the Lord, you think of rules and religious things that you always try to get to, but you always fall short. But now, giving my heart to the Lord, I had this love in my heart and as you know when you love someone you don't want to disappoint them so I, w I wanted to do better with myself so I remember clearly the first thing I said to him look Ratif, I swear a lot uh, and it's something when you go to a school of, of boys you're trying to be the macho man and it's something and I said to him the first thing I need rid of is my language it's filthy I don't want to be that guy speaking like that so Went back, prayed about it. Next day, I felt fine. I said, okay, let's go for the new thing. And um, <clears throat> I said to him, it's, 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 it's quite difficult for me to say this. And he said, well, I'll just be honest. I said, okay, I've been in a relationship now for six years with Emery, who's my wife now. And we were having sex together or with each other or whatever. And um, he was like, what, what's, the, what's the problem? It's, and that's everyone. Everyone goes through this. So I said to him, you don't know me. I, how do I give this up? What am I? I'm not going to be able to do that. And um, he said, well, just trust God and he'll, he'll take care of the rest. And I specifically remember saying to him, but it's seven months until I get married. Can we do this in six months? <laughs> <laughs> but obviously that didn't happen. We decided to commit to that. And by God's grace, we, every day we took it as it come. It was, wasn't easy, all this stuff. Obviously, every day you'll, you'll struggle with stuff. But we managed to get through it and very happy to go on through those things, so that I, those things that I can say to you today that anything's possible. Whatever you struggle with, whether it's drugs or whatever, God will take care of that. Then I came to the chapter in the book that we went through with him, um, and it was the baptism chapter. And me coming from a Ingekerk, uh, what's that in English? Dutch Reform. Um, I, I don't understand baptism. You know, baptism was something a baby in the front here put a juice on his head and that was done. <laughs> and now I had to say, okay, let's do this. But after reading a bit through what God says about it, uh, it, it made me want to do it myself. Uh, just once again, like I said, I, w I wanted to be obedient to what his word said. <clears throat> and um, the two verses I, I remember clearly from that, from that day was Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And that was beautiful for me because I honestly believe I had this terrible heart that was, like he says here, it was a heart of stone. Uh, and the other one was 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old is gone. So we were at my house. Um, I invited a few family members over and a few friends. And it was such a cool experience for me because I remember the day so clearly. It was overcast. Uh, outside it was cold. It was just before winter. June-ish, so it was really cold. He told me to get into the pool. Um, and as I went down in the water, I, I remember that, like this verse says, it was like my old self just staying behind and coming up, and it was this new me. And I was so excited about that because for the first time, 
I was really, um, really positive about this. And I, I felt something inside me has changed. And that is a beautiful thing that I can look back now on baptism and say it played a huge role in my life. The verse that Retief prayed for me that day, um, which I'm sure you all know, is when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. And I remember that, sorry guys. I remember very clearly as he said that and he was praying this over me and I'm not making this up. The clouds in the sky was just all of a sudden there was sun and he in this prayer he said thank you Lord for just showing up here today for Faf and showing him your, him your power and just that light like the, 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 the scripture says here Jesus looked down and he said this is my son who I'm well pleased with and I honestly felt that so it was a it was a great experience for me, and I'm very happy to share that with you guys. Then from this massive eye, I was ready to take on the world. Um, I had to go to the IPL now. It was time to go back. So in this two or three weeks, I had a great time, you know, just getting to know the Lord and, and spending time with Him and, and reading the Bible and praying, going to the IPL um, where I see, you guys won't know about it, but the IPL is almost like, the rock star event of cricket, you know, it's all the people around the world, all the teams, all the international players. Uh, there's a lot of religions. Um, there's no Christians in, in, in the team that I played in. So it was really tough for me. I went, like I said, from this massive high and just tucked in and I felt really, not depressed is the word, but I felt quite lonely. <coughs> and I suppose it's, it's a lot to do with being a student. It's that same, same environment where you get chucked into where it's, what the world sees and, and what you want to do and what God sees. Um, so that was a real challenge for me. And uh, I remember phoning him and saying to him, look, I'm struggling. And he told me the story about, about Jesus when he got, when he got baptized. Um, when, when the devil took him to the desert and for 40 days he had no food and he said to him, change the, the rock into bread. And then he took him up the mountain and he said, you can have all of this. Basically, Jesus, who lived this perfect life, was tested. And it made me feel, look, if I'm a nobody here, if he can come and try and test me, it means that I'm doing something wrong. So I took a lot from the path that I, would on, what, that I was on at the moment. Um, and there's this beautiful um, scripture, which my wife actually at the time um, told me I must read. And uh, it says in Romans 12 verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the re renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve that God will is, what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that put everything in perspective. All of a sudden, I didn't care about, because you've got to understand, my first year or two at the IPL, I was a completely different guy. I was living it up there with everyone, and now I came back and I'm this, I'm not the cool kid at the back of the bus for the first time. Um, so, like I said, it was tough for me, but this verse really it, it, it changed me, and it took two or three weeks, and then the guys obviously have a huge respect for what you do. So then they, they treat you just as before. It's just that initial transition period, which is quite tough. Um, then from the IPL was finished uh, at a really good time, and then I had to join back with the South African side for the first time. And my really close friend, J.P. Dumini, uh, we had a conversation about a year before this now. Sorry, I'm jumping back. In Australia, in a test match. And uh, he came to me on the field and he said, do you ever feel like there's something missing in your life? And I was, in a, I was in a, not in a, obviously a great place in terms of my, 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 my faith. So I said to him, look, I'm very happy with my life, but if there is one thing that I would like to change, it's my journey with God. Because I feel it's still something that's missing inside and and it, it, it feels like a hole. Um, and obviously now, a year later, I was saved, I got baptized. And he was, he was very excited to, to share my story. And um, he comes from a, from a Catholic background. So we both had such a similar, such a different path. And we got together, started praying. And I remember after the first, first session, him saying to me, did I pray okay? Was that all right? Um, <laughs> And he had an amazing prayer. Um, 
So he said, let's, let's, let's start a Bible study group. Let's, let's start something here in the team. And I remember right in the beginning of my, my learning, my journey through this, I read a verse. I've got it here, but I do remember it. <clears throat> it's Mark 1, verse 17, where Jesus says, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And that verse, the first time now, I, I had an opportunity where I know that religion and all, a relationship with God is personal. You don't want to share it. That's how we, how we you, I suppose, our upbringing. But I, didn't, I wasn't in a space where I can share it. Um, and this taught me that it's not about that. The reason that we are on this earth is obviously to spread God's kingdom. Um, because otherwise, none of us will be here because someone would have not told us. So I'm really grateful for that. And then we started our Bible study group. And um, I remember in Sri Lanka, it was myself, JP, David Miller, and A.B. de Villiers um, got together, started praying, doing our thing. And the second session was the one, like, which I went through was the salvation chapter. And uh, at the end of it, I said, guys, okay, it's time. If you're ready, let's commit here. Let's give our hearts to the Lord. And all three of them said they're ready to do it. And it was such a humbling experience seeing three international superstars kneeling down and, and praying to God. I mean, that's, that's so special. And <laughs> quite, I, I stood up and I took a photo uh, as a memory for them. And afterwards, they were like, yes, guys, congratulations. Smiles all out. And JP said, guys, I just need to share something with you. When I was praying, there was this beaming light shining down on me. I said to Jobs, Jobs, that's, that's such a great story, but I'm going to be honest with you, uh, it was my flash. <laughs> the great thing is our group has grown, our, our Bible study group is it's seven or eight members now, and, and obviously teammates change and new guys come in, and, and our group keeps growing, and, and like I said, that's what we're there for, and we so, it's such a great place for me to be in person, because I find that spiritual family and people that you can talk to about your relationship about God helps me so much. I find that the times that I really struggle and feel cold is when I'm distant from people and you try and take it on yourself and that's the last thing. That's what the devil wants is from you to try and I'll do this, I'll do this. Um, so this group has really made me feel stronger in that, in that journey and I remember the story of someone telling me that if you take a coal, a piece of coal and you take it out of the fire and you put it to one side, that piece of coal will get cold and it will, its flame will die. But as soon as you put it back into that flame, obviously it will heat up and work again. And that's the beautiful thing about our group is we rely on each other. And if I can encourage you guys, um, is to surround your, yourself with people that is like that, that speaks truth into your life, that is honest to you and that makes sure that you honor on the right track. I know obviously you want to go into places where you want to change people's lives, but just as a, it's really helped me a lot, is just to have that personal connection with guys that make sure that I'm always on the right track. The other thing that we as a group, and that I just quickly want to mention, which I, I feel has got value to you guys as well, is in professional sports, it's so difficult to, the, the, the challenges we had in the beginning was now obviously we knew new Christians and now all of a sudden you had to give over your life, your career, your finances, everything. But now all of a sudden when you score a duck, you must be thankful. When you score a hundred, you must be thank, thankful. So in that journey uh, with each other, we find that it doesn't matter what happens. It, you'll always find there's something you can be thankful for. And Although as bad as it seems at the time, if you, like, if you like pray with guys together, you understand that we are so fortunate in whatever we do, and we're so lucky to have the health or whatever. So one prayer in a group where I feel today was a terrible day at the office, and we'll pray together, and I'll hear all these thankful, and it just, will just lift me up. So it's a great message for you guys. Um, just quickly, I just want to share with you regarding my wife. Um, I'm almost done. Um, her journey was the opposite, and, I, and I'm sure she'll tell you guys about it, the opposite to mine. Um, and I always felt that she understood the Bible a little bit better, um, 
But like I said, I had this quick transition of, of getting to know the Lord, falling in love with Him, giving my heart to Him. And then I wanted her to get baptized as well because I wanted our marriage to start on the same course. Um, but it didn't happen like that. And I prayed about it for a long time. And about six or eight months later, or a year even, <coughs> into our marriage, one day we went to church and she said to me, she wants to get baptized. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. When do you want to do it? And she said, tomorrow. I said, okay, cool. Let me phone Retief. We'll sort something out. And she says, no, I want you to do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and I, I prayed a little bit about it, and I spoke to some, some leaders in my life. And um, I just want to get this verse to you guys. In Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that gave me the courage to do it to her right there. And then I said, okay, let's go. We got her friends and family over, and we baptized her. So it was a great day. Um, and our marriage now as well. Um, I went to church this morning in Song, and there was a guy talking about his, the pastor saying that his first year of marriage was an absolute disaster. And... Ours was also like it was, you know, we kept trying to, we didn't have that, have that balance of, of putting God in the middle. And now for the first time we really understand it because God's right in the middle. I have my time every day where I connect with God. She has her time. She understands his love. And for the first time our relationship, relationship is blossoming. And there's no fluke to that. It's just understanding what God loves is, what God's love is for us. If we understand that, you can live that better. So... I'm very grateful today where I am because of that love. Because if I, didn't, if I, if I got married without being saved, <laughs> it would have been a mess. Just lastly, guys, I just want to encourage you. Um, I mean, this is just a story that I tell, but Jesus loves us. And, and I've been in your shoes where you don't want to commit to something, you find an excuse. And, and I understand it. Look, I do. But if I can encourage you, you're here today for a reason. If you want to change your life, Today is a great opportunity. Don't make excuses. Just decide on it and go for it, and you'll see how quickly your life turns around. Thank you.